So we're going to start our session with open game play for a game we've created called Agronautica. If you would like to play along with me, we'll pop that into the chat window. My name is Barbara Chamberlain. I'm with the MassNax team. We also have Chris Engeldow, Engeldow and Ruth Torres Castillo with us today. But we're going to just start playing the game Agronautica. Agronautica is a sandbox game for making expressions. Kids get to come in and start making plants. So I'm going to make some plants. What do I get with this plant? Oh, that's kind of a cool viney thing. So I'm going to put that, oh, I made that one earlier. Okay, so I'm going to keep, I've got four numbers on the right. Now if I do four minus two plus one, I'm going to hit that green button. Oh, that's cool. That's a vine, Vinus triplicus. I'm going to, I'm going to put that back there. I'm going to start playing around with um, some multiplication while everyone's coming in. Um, do we have, have y'all been able to see that in the chat bar so far? Do we have that URL in there? There we go. Okay, so I've put the URL in. It's on massnax.com. It's done in Unity, the game engine Unity. So it might take a few minutes to come up, but go ahead and open it up and go to Agronautica and uh, terraform a planet with me. Your garden's going to look different than mine, of course. Um, because we all get to create a different garden. I'm going to keep making, and we're just going to build our garden for five minutes. Um, I'm going to play around with these parentheses over here by putting in, well, this isn't really a necessary parenthesis, but I'm going to see what happens if I just put it in four plus one. Oh, I already have that one. Okay. Well, I'll just stick that one there. What if I do like, um, let's see, two, three minus two. Now I know all my answers have to equal, have to evaluate out to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So I'm gonna do three minus two times four plus one. And what do I have there? Ooh, look at that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna draw, oh, that thing's super cool. So that is an unknown alien device. Oh, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put some unknown alien devices over here. So I see the value is five. I wonder if I can make a small switch to that. What if it's three minus one? See, that'll be two times six. Oh, wait. Oh, that gives me a weed because the, the value is not, zero through nine. I'm going to put, let me just put that weed back here. That's fine. Weeds are pretty too. My garden at home is full of weeds. So what if we do, oh, what if I do this? Okay, if I have three minus one times four minus two, yeah, ooh, a crystal. Oh, ooh, that's cool. I like those crystals. Okay, I'm going to put that here. All right. I'm just building the garden. I hope you all are building gardens along with me and terraforming your planet. We've put in the chat the link to the Agronautica game. Now, usually when we encourage the use of gameplay at school, we encourage you to do what I just did. You just get the kids playing. You just bring them in and say, we're gonna play a game. And it actually doesn't take much upfront discussion. We're just gonna get in and play a game. So that's exactly what we're doing today. And I'm hoping that you're able to go to a web browser and uh, play Agronautica. If you are, why don't you throw a thumbs up at me or throw some applause at me or something like that so I can kind of get an idea of who's out there playing games with us today. I'm gonna keep trying to make something awesome. Let's see, what if I have just one set of parentheses instead of two sets of parentheses? Let me take these out. Yeah, let me get rid of these parentheses marks here. And I'm gonna do just um, three, Get rid of that one. Three, get rid of the one. My computer's starting to slow down a little bit. What happens if I do that? Ooh, look at that. So three times and then four minus two. So this is one set of parentheses and it evaluates out to six. Ooh, I like that. All right, I'm getting a pretty good collection. Connie, I see your hand is raised. Does that mean that you are, um, you are building a plant with me? I almost heard you for a minute, Connie. Tell me again. Yes. 
Yes. I'm working on it, except I just made a weed. <laughs> you made a weed. Weeds are super easy to make, which is awesome. Just like in real life, right? Weeds are pretty easy to make. I just I made some this. wild thing now with lots of vines. You know, one of the, you did. Cool. I like it. One of the reason weeds are easy. To, oh, look at that thing. Wow. Zah. One of the things weeds are easy to make is because your answer has to be that your expression has to evaluate out to zero through nine. So if it evaluates out to 12 or negative two or two thirds, you aren't going to get a plant in this garden. But I really like that thing. So what if I do instead of three times three, I do two times, let's see, four minus one is three, let's, let's see. Uh, Connie, I'm going to meet you again just because I'm getting a little bit of feedback, but if anybody else can join in, go ahead and raise your hand. Oh, I already have that one. Well, I'll, I got it a different way. I'll just put them there next to each other. You know, one of my favorite expressions, if you are having trouble making an expression, let me just X that out. This is one of the easiest expressions you can make. Boom, baby. The expression of four. And you get this very cool rock. Actually, I have all those rocks. I'm going to change here and I'm going to go change all my numbers. I'm going to just replace all numbers and confirm. Ooh, now I've got whole new numbers. Ooh, I don't have a six yet. So I'm going to just make a six rock. Can you use negative numbers? That's an excellent question. Does someone want to answer that for me? Can you use, has anyone experienced that yet? It's a good question. Let's try it. Try it and tell me what happens if you use negative numbers. All right, let's see. I'm going to do six minus two minus two. And I'm going to do six minus two minus four. That's going to be what I, what do I have. So that should be zero. Ooh, that's a loopy zero. Cool. Ooh, I got an achievement. Dun, da, da, da. All right, so I am hoping that you will keep playing your game. Oh, Tr Trish asks if you're stuck. I wonder if you were, it asks in the game if you're stuck. What happened when it asks you were stuck? What happened then? All right, well, happening. I'm going to come over here while you're playing your game. And we're going to just say a few things about MassNax. So I already introduced myself. I'm Barbara. MassNax is funded by the National Science Foundation. Thank you, National Science Foundation. But MassNax is a website full of tools designed for concepts that are hard for kids to get. So we take math concepts, everything from number sense to rate to ratio to graphing to pre-algebra. Um, and early algebra concepts. And we, we find the things that kids stum stumble on the most. And then we create animations and games around there. Also on the site is a whole set of teaching with materials, printable guides, videos, how to teach with every single one of our guides. There's a short video made just for teachers, three to five minutes about how to teach with that specific thing. So go take a look at that and take a look at some of the teaching materials. And we have found kind of a five-step process that we think works amazingly with games. The first step, we did it. We just dumped you right in and we said, just play. In fact, in some of our research, the kids that have had the biggest change, thank you, the biggest change in their self, uh, self-confidence and being able to write expressions is that teachers let them just play on their own. And then the second biggest change was where teachers got kids talking about the game to each other. So one of the most important things we can do, whether our kids are in the classroom with us or whether they're playing at home, is to provide an opportunity to reflect and discuss. So we're going to do that today. We are going to put you in a breakout. Oh, no, I just want to hear in chat. So put some things into chat. What did you like about this game? What made it challenging? Let's take advantage of that chat. And if some of you want to raise your hands and, and just shout out to the group, what do you think is, is neat about the game? Anybody want to weigh in on that so far? Oh, someone says they like the thinking and the decision making and the images and the colors. I like those too. Is there anything else that you like so far about what we've seen? Oh, I like I can do whatever I want and don't care about the weeds. It's kind of cool. We have seen kids just make a screen full of weeds, right? The weeds are just, yeah. We've had kids who make these elaborate patterns out of weeds. And you know what? We let them. We let them. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad you like the images. That's wonderful. It's kind of cool how everybody can do a different garden. 
So here's what we do after we have kids play games. We just open it up for a discussion. Now you'll notice we haven't asked any questions about math yet, and here's why. We just wanna get kids talking about the game because if kids talk about the game, they're gonna talk about the math. So you, we just put everybody on the evil play, but nobody comes into this room thinking they're bad at math because we're just talking about the game. That's all we're doing is talking about the game and we open up that discussion. So normally in a classroom, we would like kids to play for 10 to 15 minutes or so and then take like five, eight, 20 minutes just discussing what happened in the game. And then we go to the next step, which is to play the game again. So now we started hearing, well, how did you do this? Did you use the field guide? Wait, I can use two sets of parentheses. What do I do with the different operators? And then we go back to the game and everyone gets to play again. So that's what we're going to do today. So Kara, I'm going to ask you in a minute, if you'll put, I'm not sure how many people we have on today. Let's maybe go ahead and do maybe seven breakout rooms. And what I'm going to ask you to do when you go in your breakout room is I'm hoping at least one person in each breakout room will share your screen and show us what your garden looks like. And then I want you to teach each other how to use the field guide. So we'll go ahead, break out into the breakout room. When you get to your breakout room, someone share a screen and then someone teach you how to use the field guide. Kara, we are ready to break out when you're ready to do it. Welcome back everyone. So I'm gonna turn this over to Chris and we're gonna talk about what happened in our breakout rooms. All right, so I was I was in one of the breakout rooms, but I'm curious, um, and I can no longer see the chat, it looks like, um, but what are some things that you guys found most helpful as you were playing the game and playing with the field guide um, that you maybe didn't notice before? What are some new things that you may have learned? I've heard about order of operations, steps taking shortcuts. Um, some people are asking if it gets higher. Want to know if there's um, number sense, negatives, squares, and square roots. Um, someone said, I, uh, Kay Fisher says, the field guide helped us know what we needed to get a specific plant. Uh -huh. uh, someone said they can change numbers, right? That was uh, found in the breakout room I was in, that you can switch some of the numbers. So Kay Fisher asked if exponents, decimals, fractions are an option. Mm -hmm. Was anybody able to do that? I'm guessing you're asking because you weren't sure how to. Um, it was designed for um, grades three through eight and uh, more intensely focused on like grades five, six, maybe grade four in there as well. But um, that's part of why the reason that, uh, for instance, exponents weren't included. Um, so whole numbers are the only thing allowed. Um, and that's why you also couldn't use negative numbers earlier. And part of that was just in the design process, trying to figure out how to not get carried away with the types of plants that we were including. Did you want to say anything else about that, Barb? Just if you haven't seen chat, some people are asking some great questions. I'd like to ask kids, like the parentheses are the order, but they don't imply multiplication. Mm -hmm. Like in this game, you don't have to put, or do you have to put a multiplication sign in to make parentheses imply multiplication, which would be really cool to talk to kids about. And also, is there a final aim? Is there a monster to avoid if you don't have eight weeks? Like what's the point of this game? Those are some great questions to talk to the kids about. Yes. I agree. And they can access the Mad Snacks for free as well. That's one of the points that they're talking in the chat. Yes. All right, I'm going to hand this over to Ruth now to talk about the next stage. Barb talked about five stages that we have. And um, so I'm gonna stop sharing here and let her share. So hello everyone. Um, so, uh, we want kids to make uh, some expressions together. So we will do that um, uh, with what we call a sunburst activity in, in an app called uh, Padlet. This Padlet app, let me show you. It's a collaborative tool where multiple people, people can uh, edit at the same time. So I'm going uh, to show you how to make this sunburst activity. In, in collaboration with Chris. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit the plus 
sign button to add one new post to this Padlet. So the objective of Sunburst is to create expressions to target this number using the selected operations that we have over here. So um, while I am doing addition, Chris, can you please help me edit and do some multiplication uh, or expressions for multiplication level? So that sure. you can see uh, the collaboration in this. So my target number is eight and I will take the addition part. So I will start writing um, six plus two, let's see. Six plus two, since it's addition, will give me the eight. And I will change the post to orange color just to match with the addition. The next level um, uh, to continue with this, with this sunburst activity is to start uh, decomposing, the num decomposing the numbers from previous level. In this case, I, I will decompose, I will add one more post. I will decompose the six into three times two, which will give me a six. And the uh, plus two will remain the same. So again, I will change the color to orange and this time I will connect the post to my previous level just to show a, a sequence of the steps that I'm, I'm doing. So the purpose is to get all the levels by decomposing uh, the different levels and all the expressions you will see here will target the number, uh, the, the target number, which is eight in this case. Let me, I, you can see here, um, you can see a complete sunburst activity right now. So now it's your turn. Um, while I am talking, uh, please go to the chat, the chat window and copy the Google, the Google uh, doc link that we post for you. And um, as, after we go to the breakout rooms, you will go to the to to the browser where you open this link, and um, you will go directly to the breakout room number that you were assigned before. You will open the link, and you will start working collaboratively with all your partners. Um, remember that everybody, uh, as long as they have access to the Padlet, everybody can collaborate. Did you uh, did you all get a copy of the of the um, link. You know, I think one of the things we rarely give kids the opportunity to do is just an open space to create. We rarely get to do that. That's what this game and the sunburst activity is all about. You just give kids an open space and say, make some expressions. What are the rules for making expressions? When do you have to use parentheses? You experiment and find out with that. And that's what this activity and the game is all about is helping kids have the freedom to make expressions that match their intent. So the Padlet, if you wanna do a breakout with kids, one of the easiest ways to do this, of course, is to just draw that on your piece of paper Hey class, what are we gonna put in the middle of our sunburst? Someone give me a number between zero and nine. Great, six. I'm gonna put that in the middle. Now we're gonna take plus. Someone give me an expression that if you use plus, evaluates to the answer of six. Three plus two, I heard that, excellent. So we created these sunbursts for you in Padlet so that we could work collaboratively in that. If you wanna do that with your students in Padlet, if they have that digital facility and the ability to do that, that's fantastic. If not, if you want to, and there's a sunburst that's in our teacher guide for this that you can just print up where they put the number in and they can put it in, that's awesome too. If you wanna create the sunburst like I did with my spectacular art skills here, now we can do minus and you can take them through that. The thing that's weird about this, that's not weird, that's maybe uncommon for what we're used to, is creating an open space where they can create expressions with each of the operators. 
something, you can do something with plus, you can do something with minus, do something with multiplication, do something with divide. You can use any of the tools we've given you on that or create your own in Padlet on that. And about the sunburst already made, yes, it's in the teacher's guide that's gonna be in the materials for this workshop. It's also in the teacher guide for Agronautica on the Mass Snacks page. Um, Barbara, they're asking yes. if the Padlets are going to be available for, a, for them all the time. Yeah, Padlet is available. I think you can do up to one pad, up to five Padlets free, and then it's ten dollars a month. So our Padlet isn't something that you can, but you can draw that in probably in five minutes. That's what Ruth did. Is she just put the number in, put in the operators, and then you can give anybody the URL to that Padlet, and then they can access that. All right. Okay, Chris, do you want to take us through kind of the four steps we've done so far? Yes. Let me uh, Chris brought up a good point. Whether you see each other's stuff as a setting you can change in Padlet. We like giving users that collaborative space where they can do it together because if they're talking about the math and they're teaching each other, they're learning it better than if we just teach it to them. Right. Um, okay, so we've gone through a few different steps. And one thing that we wanted to make sure that we talk about in this session is that we know that everyone doesn't have the same access to kids. So some of you might be able to have real time interaction as a whole class with your students, whereas others of you might not have that or maybe you only have that with a certain subset of the students that you might have right now. Um, so uh, the first step of this five step process is play the game. And so that can obviously be done at home, not in real time with other people. Um, even though it is good if students are able to interact with one another. And the second step was the reflect and discuss. And we did this together on, uh, through Zoom. We were talking with one another using chat. Um, but there are some other things that uh, we have ideas about how this could be done. So one option is that students are sort of talking either with parents or interacting with the teacher. And this could be things like maybe the students um, only have access to you through email or some kind of text-based format. And so they're able to share uh, images or descriptions of what they did or issues they faced or tips that they had for strategies in playing the game. And then you as the teacher can then use those selectively to send back out to other students in order to encourage them to think about those ideas and make use of them. Maybe a student is struggling to create a plant. And so you can say, hey, uh, so-and-so was really having trouble. They were trying to create this plant. Anyone know how to do this? Can you send something back to help them out? Or um, this other student was, um, had created this really cool plant. And I wonder if someone else can create it using a different expression than what they did. And this is one way to spur them also thinking about the mathematics. Another option would be students are able to share with one another, but maybe you don't have access for the whole class to be together at the same time. So one option could be to assign students with uh, a, uh, a pair of students together where maybe they can at least share ideas with one another or perhaps even schedule time to play with one another, even if it's just over the phone while they're playing, talking about what they're doing. Um, and then the teacher would be able to hopefully have access to that as well, uh, or at least be able to check in with those students, see what's going on, and sort of send out messages from what's happening from uh, the pairs of students to the class to help spur conversation or even prompt further tasks for students to do. And then, the, of course, the last option, which we think is the best option if it's available, is that the class is able to talk to each other in uh, real time, play the game with each other, con uh, have conversations, um, and share ideas with one another in real time. And then that leads to the third step, which is play the game again. And this is a really important step because students really start to think about the, the math more at this step because they've had a chance to see what other people are doing that they maybe not have noticed. And they think more about that. And then the step that we just did, which was a supplemental activity, really digs deep into the math that they may not have been thinking about as deeply yet. And it helps push students towards this final gameplay session where they're able to uh, put that to use. And as Barb mentioned, the, the materials on the website, the teacher guides have the materials in them that you can use. There's this uh, student handout for the sunburst that could be printed and sent home or students could print at home or draw their own. 
Uh, so there's lots of options there. And our other games, of course, also have these materials freely available as well. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Ruth to talk more about what this last step looks like and why we have found in our research that it is so important for students to have this final session to be able to play the game again after doing this activity. In the real implementation, we will go back uh, to play after the Sunburst activity. But because of the time, we won't be able to do that um, a third game session. But we want uh, we want you to, to see how important it is to have this, this uh, third round of play. And what you're seeing here in this screen is um, the, different, the different steps or the different plans, type of plans that students have made uh, over the three rounds of play. And um, the more it all resumes, or these images, it all resumes in the more they play, the more complex expressions and in this case, the more complex plans they will be able to make. So we encourage all of you to go back and uh, to go back after after this presentation or uh, uh, at the end of your day and play with the different plans uh, or or the the type of expressions that you could not get while you were playing today. And if you can see um, the third the third round of play in the screen. It has a lot, a lot of uh, variety uh, of expressions uh, going from the simple one, like the wits, to the very complex ones, like the artifacts. So it also has a little bit of um, the idea of the sunburst uh, activity, where if you are finding hard to make one expression or one value that targets, so put that into your, your as your target value and do the sunburst and you can come up with the different expressions and levels um, to make the structure of the plant that you, that you want. Yeah, you know, we had a great comment on chat, which is this is a good example of the play again. Now, of course, these games can be played by a child at home by themselves. Absolutely, they can. But this is a fantastic way to engage kids with their siblings or kids with their parents, because now parents can play these games with their kids and they can have that moment of, wait, how did you do that? So what we tried to do today was to kind of give an idea, first off, the settings in which we've seen kids make the most gains is when teachers feel very comfortable just letting them play first, let the kids play with the concepts. Second, talk about it. And this is where we had our teachers who participated in our research study say what they loved most was the ability to support differentiation of learners because they can have a child who's great at math next to a child who struggles and they can play together because one might be fantastic at gameplay. And so having kids collaborate, these are the two biggest changes we saw. Teacher, kids that had the biggest change, they had teachers that encouraged open gameplay and they facilitated collaboration among kids. While your learners are at home, Home, you can have that collaboration happen with you as you have kids play at home and you come back into Zoom and you just talk about the game and then you say, tonight everyone play again and we're going to meet tomorrow. Or you can bring them into Zoom and just say, we're going to just sit here and talk to each other while we play games. Or you can have them send screenshots. You can have them talk to their parents. Get them talking about the gameplay so that they talk about the math. And then that other step we went through, which is the sunburst. All of our games have an activity that you apply what you learned off the game. That's a really powerful next step for the kids to then be saying, you figured this out on your own. What are you going to do with it? Apply it in a meaningful way. And then you send them back to the game. And that game play becomes different every time, exactly like what Ruth showed you. Those kids get ownership of these gardens. And then they start wanting to make expressions that match their intent. And that's what we need them to do in algebra. Before they get to algebra, they need to get very comfortable making expressions that match their intent. That's what this game is designed to do. Other games go through um, understanding the concepts of variables. We have a game called Curse Reverse, which is all about understanding how variables work. Same things, have the kids play it, reflect on the game, have the kids play it, do an applied learning activity, and then have them play again. We have games for number sense, we have games for rate and ratio, we have games for graphing, all of those, uh, place value, all of those are online and mass snacks are always free, free all the time. Any questions that you all have as we start phasing into the next session?
oh, Lisa put, you know, as a non-gamer, I really like this. Oh, I'm glad, Amber, that your kids like Ratio Rumble. You know, teachers, even teachers who are gamers, often we can struggle finding the time to play the game because we got stuff to do. So one of the things we did, they're not quite up for Agronautica because it's new, is we have gameplay videos where you can get online and watch a five minute video and see how the game is played and what all the levels are like. So that's a nice kind of head start before you have your kids teaching. But it is fine to go into a classroom and say, kids, I haven't played with this. Will you teach me how to do it? That's an amazing strategy. It's fantastic to go into class and be like, I don't know what to do with these parentheses. Who's going to show me? I don't know what the field guide does. Someone show me how to do it. And then the kids get to be the experts, which is an amazing thing to see. Barbara? Um, yeah. Um, uh, Lisa is asking if all the activities are, uh, can be played online, like the sandbox. Yes. No. And you know why? Because none of us thought we were going to be moving to a situation where all of our kids were online. However, we are now saying, how can we make this happen online? All of them have activities that really follow that, get the kids to do it to themselves. So I think a lot of teachers will be able to read that teacher's guide and be like, I know what to do with that. But we are now working on how to come up with some better ways that make that more accessible online. And even just the idea of kids getting into Zoom, you know, we're seeing with my kids and some work I'm doing with other students, um, kids miss being listened to. Kids sometimes just need to sit in the Zoom room and have the teacher say, what do you know? What's going on? What have you noticed? And so just having them all play the game last night, whatever they did it on their own, and bring in a room and say, what did you learn about this game is a fantastic use of online learning, getting those kids teaching each other. Because again, if they talk about the game, they'll talk about the math. All right, any other questions for this? Oh, hopefully you're gonna play some Agronautica. Yes, I will just uh, like to add at the end um, that it is really important just the first step that uh, you just did, just let them play. Let them play and explore. And as they are playing, you will notice, in, you will notice how different um, uh, type of gamers they are and you will even learn with them as well, just like we did today. So Ruth, we have to brag on her. She's now Dr. Torres Castillo. And her defense, which she, I think, was one of the first at our university to do her defense with an entirely online committee, thanks to quarantine, her defense was specifically on what do teachers do during gameplay that changes their learners the most. Any parting words of wisdom for us, Dr. Torres Castillo? <laughs> well, I learned, I definitely learned a lot from you as teachers. You uh, provide me the opportunity to um, discover how um, non-gamer teachers, like some of you uh, mentioned, they were able to understand what is, what is to play the game or to have a game as part of their lesson. So they, most of the participants that um, I interviewed were really motivated of using games uh, after they have um, a Maths Next intervention. Well, they see that it's not just letting, letting the kids play, but to facilitate, to collaborate with them and learning with them as well. I just want to say thank you. Um, and I hope that what we've done here is helpful to you in your classroom. And please reach out to us on Twitter, um, or I guess you could find us uh, through email. And, and let us know how you're using these things, what you're finding helpful, and if you need support. Um, we really want to make sure that these materials are useful for you in the classroom. That was our whole goal in creating them. So please let us know how it's going. So I know that Kara is going to take us to break and give everyone a chance to eat lunch. If you're like me and you haven't eaten your lunch yet, are you like going to take a break? But let me just say thank you. Our country is going through a learning curve where Everyone we know is having to figure out Zoom. And guess what? Our teachers are at the forefront because the teachers are having to train themselves, their administrator, their students, and their students' families. <laughs> and so I just want to say thank you. In the midst of everything else that you do for learning, you are raising the tide. All of our votes are going to get higher because you're raising the tide for all of us. So thank you not only for the work you're doing to support your students socially and cognitively and intellectually and emotionally, but for shepherding us on this learning curve and for holy cow, giving us time today, taking time today to just learn more. All of these sessions I've enjoyed sitting on and so just teachers, oh my gosh, 
Thank you. You're doing amazing work and we appreciate you.